الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد اي الاحباب we reach the the eighth point in the treaties uh shar sunnah by imam babahari rahimahullah ta'ala after the seventh point where the imam said wahdhur sagara muhtathat min al-umur fa inna as-sagar al-bid'ah تعود حتى تصير كبارا وكذلك كل بدعة أحدثت في هذه الأمة كان أولها صغيرا يشبه الحق فاعتبروا بذلك من دخل فيها ثم لم يستطع المخرج منها وصار الدين يدان بها مخالف للصراط المستقيم فخرج من الإسلام فانظر رحمك الله so here the sheikh mentions this is the uh, eighth point. Fandir rahimakullah kullu man sami'ta kalamuhu min ahla zamanika khassa fala ta'jalanna wa la tadkhalanna fi shay'in minhu hatta tas'al wa tanzur hal takallama fihi ahadun min ashabi rasul ashab nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ahadun min ulama fa in asbahat fihi atharan anhum فتمسك به ولا تتجاوزه لشيء ولا تختار عليه شيء فتسقط من في النار. The Sheikh said, uh, Imam Babahari رحمه الله تعالى, he said, beware of the small innovations. And this was the seventh point. We're just quickly going to go over that and bring us up to speed on the eighth point. He said, beware of the small innovations because they grow until they become large. And we already discussed that, that, uh, most innovations in the religion, they began small. And then over time, they, be, they grew, they grew and they grew until they became very extreme uh, forms of innovation. And to such an extent, some of the people left the fold of Islam by following those bid'ah if it reached to shirk, shirk al-akbar or kufr al-akbar. And then he said, and this is the case with every innovation introduced in this ummah, it began as something small, bearing resemblance to the truth. And of course, bid'ah, that if it didn't have any resemblance to the truth, you know, if there wasn't tashbih, if there wasn't, then there wouldn't be a need to call it shubahat, call it something doubtful. Why? Because it would be so clear that no one would, would uh, fall into it. But instead, there is something that's enticing about it. There's something that people fall into it because there's a resemblance to the truth. There's things, some people have tried to beautify it. The shaitan has tried to beautify uh, innovative matters so that people would follow it and leave the sunnah. And then he said, Rahimullah Ta'ala, uh, he said, it began as something small bearing resemblance to the truth, which is why those who enter it were misled and then were unable to leave it. So it grew and became the religion which they followed and thus deviated from the straight path and left Islam. So then the Shaykh is, is making reference to those people who followed the bid'ah, who followed innovation until it reached the point of heresy and some of them, they left the fold of Islam with that. It started off small again and it grew. The practices grew. People built onto those practices until it resembled, resembled nothing from uh, Islam, nothing from the Surat al Mustaqim, the, the straight path, which the Prophet ﷺ made a resemblance by drawing in the sand. And the Sahaba said, Khattalana Rasulullah ﷺ khattan. The Prophet ﷺ drew a, a line in the sand. Waqal, have a sabil Allah. And he said, This is the path of Allah. That's the straight path. Thumma khattan yameen wa khattan shimal. Wa an shimalihi, wa kama qala nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, kama qil fi hadith. Then he drew uh, on the right and he drew a line on the left. And he said, have he subul. He said, those are the paths. Those are the paths that lead astray. Wa'iyadun billah min dhalika. Then Imam Baba Hari rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, may Allah have mercy upon you. And again, we discuss that the ulama, one of the, the from the aslub or the way of the, the ulama and manners, and that as teachers and so forth, that we should try to adapt is to supplicate for your students and the ones reading and the ones listening to you. You know, say, may Allah have mercy. Ayyul Ahbab, 
oh, you, you know, oh, beloved ones, uh, may Allah have mercy upon you. May Allah guide you. So these kind of, uh, of uh, supplications to Allah Azza wa Jal, they cause the listener or the reader to be attentive to what the speaker is saying. And this is the methodology of the Salaf and the way of the Salaf that they used to do in their books and in their lectures and so forth in order to uh, uh, seek the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the favor of Allah azza wa jal as well as to uh, invite or entice the listener or the reader to pay careful attention to what is being, uh, to what will come next. So the Imam said, may Allah have mercy upon you. Examine carefully the speech of everyone you hear from in your time particularly. He was saying this. When was uh, Shara Sunnah Imam Baba Hadi? He lived uh, in the third century, I believe. Third century Hijri. He died 329 Hijri. He was saying this. He was saying, ah, He was talking about in his time. What about our time? How many things are so strange that we hear that people say related to the religion. Things, they make halal haram and haram halal. And all kind of newly invented matters. We can't even begin to count the, the deviants that have taken place in this time and age. Also with the context of the time, the differences in the time that we live in, the way uh, information is exchanged, the way uh, we... Uh, communicate to one another the way we travel. Everything is so vastly different from the time that the Imam was writing. But however, those kawaid, those principles of the religion, the madhab of the salaf remains the same. And it's upon us to adhere to them and to, to understand how to apply those principles in our time and throughout time. To continue to hold on to the rope of Allah Azza wa Jal, Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, with the Faham and the Salaf of this Ummah. So he said, Examine carefully the speech of everyone you hear from in your time, particularly. So do not act in haste and do not enter into anything from it until you ask and see did any of the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam speak about it or any of the scholars? So if you find a narration from them about it, cling to it. Do not go beyond it for anything. And do not give precedence to anything over it and thus fall into the fire. Imam Baba Hari rahimahullah ta'ala uh, gave, uh, showed us, illustrated for us the importance of adhering to the narrations of the Salaf. And he was, uh, he's from our Salaf. You know, he died in 329 Hijri, rahimahullah ta'ala. And he was making these types of statements back then, a thousand, eleven hundred years ago, one thousand, one hundred years ago, plus maybe one thousand, one hundred and five years ago or so or more, or six or seven years ago, he was saying this state, he died. So if things seem strange in those times that they heard strange strange uh, uh, newly invented matters and deviation and things from the people and, and not just new issues but new, uh, new ways of understanding, then what about us in our time with all the jama'at and all the groups? Imam Uzayi rahimahullah ta'ala said, knowledge is what comes from the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that which does not come from a single one of them is not knowledge. Shaykh uh, Ahmed al-Najmi rahimahullah ta'ala will read a couple of the benefits he mentioned with regards to this uh, statement of Imam Baba Hari. He said, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, regarding the statement where Imam Baba Hari said, Fandhu rahimakullah kullu min sami' uh, kullu, kulla uh, min, min sami'ta kalamahu min ahla zamanika khas فَلَا تَعْجَلَنَّ وَلَا تَرْخَلَنَّ فِي شَيْءٍ مِّنْهُ حَتَّ تَسْأَلْ وَتَنْذِرْ إِلَىٰ آخِرَ الْكَلَامِ So regarding the statement where Imam Baba Hadi said, May Allah have mercy upon you, examine carefully the speech of everyone you hear from in your time particularly, and do not act in haste, and do not enter into anything from it until you ask and see. Did any of the companions do it? Uh, and etc. And did any of the ulama say it or state it? And this is this brings up a point 
This is something you hear the ulama often say, uh, and especially when it comes to people uh, bringing something or saying or saying an understanding with regards to the religion. You hear them; they'll say, "Men sabaka bihada qawm." Men sabaka bihada qawm. Who preceded you in that statement? Why? Because you should have someone who who preceded you. If you make something that sounds like a principle in the religion, that something that is a rule for people to follow, something that is uh, that you narrate, who preceded you in this? And in that understanding, you say that it's permissible to go with Jamaat Tablik and and do this and do that. Who preceded you in this? Even in this time, these kind of questions, it's upon us to ask if we hear something very strange and that uh, some, the person who, who's, who makes a statement that they have to back it up with evidence from Kitabi, La wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or Faham of the Salaf of this Ummah, narrations of the Salaf of this Ummah, Radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een or Rahimahumullah jami'an. So he said, uh, Shaykh Ahmed al-Najmi rahmatullah alayhi about this statement, He said that the Imam He said that the Imam Rahimahullah Ta'ala that he has illustrated or pointed us or pointed to uh, something uh, very uh, very good with this speech. This speech indicates for us something very good or it is very good. And he said so then he he begins to bring us some modern day examples so he says that this is khair, the speech from uh, Imam Babahari, and he said that any affair that you should not be, uh, that, that is a new affair, some new issue, new messiah, new things, uh, or something you've never heard, don't be in a hurry and rush to enter into those affairs. So if, for example, you hear someone uh, call to the methodology of the Muslim brethren, Brotherhood, the Ikhwan al-Muslimin, then don't be in a hurry to agree with them. Don't be in haste and eager to agree with them. And don't... Don't take from him in his praising of that methodology. Why? Because it's an innovative methodology and this is not the time and place to go into details about Ikhwan al-Muslimin, but the, the Asas... Uh, where they differ with Ahl Sunnah, the Salafis, is that their minhaj is based upon uh, primarily political, what they feel is political maslaha, political benefit. And so that's why they believe in participating in parliamentary elections and uh, democratic uh, uh, forums and democratic uh, uh, political systems in order to achieve their agenda. And they are, a, a, a principle of theirs is based upon compromise. One of the bis, biggest uh, principles of where Akhwana Muslimin goes astray is that they base their minhads, their methodology of achieving their aims, their Islamic aims, by, by compromise. So it's almost a big, by any means necessary. Why? For example, the Qaeda that uh, their Sheikh uh, the, the founder of Akhwana Muslimin, uh, Hassan al-Banna, where he said that basically what means we agree to disagree uh, or we, we will work together on those things that we agree upon and we will excuse one another for those things which we disagree over. And this is a qaida that the ulama have uh, refuted 
especially from the, the modern day scholars have refuted this Qaeda that was a newly invented uh, principle by Hassan al-Banna. And this principle is the foundation, forms the foundation of Akhan al Muslimin and their methodology with regards to the religion. And it uh, goes against the madhab of the Salaf. So if you hear someone, as uh, Sheikh Ahmed al-Najmi said, uh, praising Akhan al Muslimin and their methodology or following them, then you should not uh, go along with them and praise them and that methodology. And if you, and then he said, likewise, if you hear someone who uh, calls to the uh, menhaj of the sururiya or the qutubiya, and these are, or, or jamata tablik, then don't be uh, in a hurry to be in agreement with them. Or, and then to, uh, to follow them and that uh, before you, you know, involve yourself with anything, that you should, uh, you should ask about it. You should ask the people of knowledge about it. And you should look and, and look at these issues. Give it uh, analysis. وَتَبْحَثْ uh, وَتَفَكَّرْ And also that you should think and you should research if you have the ability to do so, of course, before you involve yourself. You know, involve yourself with an Islamic political party. Involve yourself with going with Khuruj, with Jamaat al -Tablik. Involve yourself with, uh, uh, with uh, plotting rebellions and these kind of things as a Khan al and some of these other groups involve themselves with and, and some of their false understandings. And the Qutubiya, those followers are those who take the path of Sayyid Qutub. That you should be aware of that and you should reflect and you should ask the people of knowledge. And this is the just of what uh, Sheikh Ahmed al Najmi is saying. He mentioned some other fawaid, but this is the just of what he's saying with regards to this point is that you should be cautious, you should uh, seek knowledge before you enter into affairs, and you should ask the people of knowledge for guidance and do not just blindly participate and fall into groups and sects in Hezbiya. He mentioned specifically Hezbiya, meaning to follow into partisanship and follow into groups and sects. Uh, you know, and why, why is this relevant to what we're discussing? Because Imam Baba Hari rahimahullah ta'ala was talking about what? He was talking about not being in a hasty to uh, follow the any strange new statements that you hear and new paths, but that you should ask who preceded you in this? You know, is there an athar? Is there something from the Sahaba? Is there something from the Tabi'een? Is there something from the Itba'i Tabi'een? Rahimahumullah Jameen? Or the ulama of this time? Or what have you? Is there something to give precedence for these actions, for these statements, for these understandings, for this methodology, for this minhaj, for this new aqidah, for these new points of aqidah, for uh, even new understandings in fiqh. Is there uh, someone who preceded you? Man sabaka bihada qawl. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept this good and forgive our evil. And anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.